MSM, good morning. Charlene here reporting the announcements for this week. First things first, we are wrapping up our series on emotions and next week we will be kicking off a new series called Loving Life Jesus, which is very exciting. Second, you may remember us sharing an update about our mission partners in Armenia and how we can be praying for them, especially in light of the war there. And we have the honor and privilege of them joining us next week in Life Groups to share with us about the Young Life Ministry in Armenia. So stay tuned for a video to hear a little bit more about um, them and what's happening there. And most of all, join us on Tuesday night at 7.15 to find out more about them. This is not really an announcement, but a word of encouragement. This week, I want to remind you that our Creator is good, He is merciful, and He is kind. And often we forget the simple fact that He is not just our Lord and our Savior, but our Creator, which means that we are His creation. Colossians 1.16 says, All things have been created through Him and for Him. And when we forget this, we become our own masters. We start to only care about our own passions, and often we become overwhelmed with our own emotions. So don't forget that we are His creation, and He is our Creator and surrendering ourselves to Him is the safest place we can be. Now, the last announcement I have for you all is that we are very excited to welcome in Sam Abel as our new MSM director. So stay tuned on Instagram and in our Sunday services to learn more about Sam. We'll get to know more about him in the next few weeks, but here's a little preview. Well, what is up CPC students? It is great to finally meet you. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Sam and this is my beautiful wife. Free. We just wanna spend a couple minutes here helping you get to know us and we are so excited for the opportunity to get to know you as well. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. Bree, where are we from? We are from Florida, very hot, sunny, Florida. I'm talking, it's hot all the time. They like call can, California sunny? <laughs> no. You can boil <laughs> eggs on the sidewalk yes. in Florida. It's so hot. Uh, so we are super glad to be here in California. I grew up in Wisconsin, which is like the exact opposite of Florida and California. Very cold all the time. Lots of cows, lots of cheese and- Flatland. And flatland, yeah, that's okay. about it. But I did have a question for Bree. Oh, also y'all, I will tell you right now, we don't have any kids. I'm sorry to disappoint y'all. But we do have two cats. We have two cats. We have two cats. So we do. Bree, tell us a little bit more about our cats. We have Bella. She's the kindest, sweetest cat ever. Then we have Piper. She's one, so she's a lot younger than Bella. And she terrorizes everything. How did you find Bella? Bella, we, um, we found her outside. They're both rescues, so we found Bella outside, but I've had her since she was a like, newborn kitten. And then Piper we found at two weeks old on the side of the highway, so we saved her. But she, yeah, she terrorizes everything. We love her, she's super cute, but she is- She beats up on her sister sometimes. She beats up on her sister and tries to take control. All right, Bella. so if you had a favorite meal, what would your favorite meal be? Burgers and fries, always, and ranch. I know this to be true. I Everywhere love ranch we go, dip. Burgers and fries, ranch dip. Yeah. Every time. Any kind of burger. Uh, so matter. I think for me, my favorite meal would have to be something with like chicken Alfredo. Anything with Alfredo. Chicken Alfredo, shrimp Alfredo, anything that you can fit Alfredo sauce on, I'm all about it. <laughs> he does uh, like Alfredo. Yeah. And then if you could sprinkle like some Parmesan cheese on top, I'm having a good, good time. <laughs> uh, Bree, what's your favorite hobby? Favorite hobby would be going to a coffee shop and drinking coffee and reading. Probably my favorite hobby. Yeah, I like to I like to listen to records. So if you guys want to talk to me about music, I am here for that 24/7. <laughs> uh, also, I'm about to drop my phone number in the chat. So if you want to send me a text, send me the contact info, and I'd love to get back to you. We can talk music or video games or something like that. Uh, but the other question that I had was, if you were an animal, what type of animal would you be? Mm, I think I'd be a lion. Why? They're fierce. And it's a cat. <laughs> okay, which leads to the next cats. question. I would be a wolf. Uh, like the pack mentality, the, the I just like dogs more than cats, which leads into my next question here. Um, dogs or cats? Oh, cats. Why? Well, <laughs> they're just better. Agree to disagree. <laughs> uh, but y'all, just a little bit about me and my story here at the end before we wrap up. Uh, I rededicated my life to Jesus at a summer camp. A summer camp much like ones y'all have gone on and much ones like we will go on in the future. And it was in those moments at summer camp when leaders were pouring into me and I was getting to experience 
what the faith can be and what Jesus can be in my life that I was like, you know what, I want to do ministry for the rest of my life. And it was at that camp that I had a ton of fun too. So those are the things that Bree and I want to contribute and want to bring into CPC students. We are of a firm conviction that God is already at work in this ministry, that he's already done phenomenal things, that he's already done great stuff in this ministry. So we're not looking to subtract from that. We're looking to add to that and to add value to it. So we are so excited to be here at, in California. We're so excited to be here at CPC and we can't wait to get to know you. We are so excited that Sam is here and we want to invite you guys to be praying for Sam and his wife, Bree, as they transition to life in the Bay Area. Um, and also just reach out to them, say hi, let them know who you are and get excited because we will have lots of time to spend with them and get to know them. You guys were there. We had teams from all over the world come for one special night. Last Tuesday, they competed for the gold of the 2021 Winter Olympics. It was amazing. One team, the Super Mario nerds were in first place, but then they tripped during the tape measure event. And then the Spice Girls were spicing it up. They lit the whole auditorium on fire, but they did not prevail. And so Taco, Bulldogs, and the GWS were sprinting at the 100 meter race to get the gold and only one person prevailed. And ladies and gentlemen, your winner of the 2021 Olympics is the GWA! Congratulations, great winning sisters. You guys are our 2021 Olympic champions. We hope you guys had a fantastic time. You guys get a gold virtual medal. Let's pass that. Let's grab that right there. Alrighty. Hope you guys had fun. That was a lot of fun. Congratulations, ladies. You guys knocked it out the park. And with that being said, we're going to transition into some worship. And I just want to read a quick quote from John Bunyan. It says, in prayer, it is better to have a heart without words than words without a heart. And I think that also applies to worship. I think sometimes, especially just it being virtual, we can just go through the rhythm. We can just sing the songs. We can just go through the motions. Right. But is there really a heart behind it? Right. And it's better for us to have a heart that is aimed at, at worshiping God without any words than there is just thousand words speaking, but no real affection for God. So I challenge you today, maybe today you don't really say or speak the words, but maybe you just have that quiet moment uh, with God in your heart, worshiping in him in heart. Um, so that's just an encouragement for you guys. If you want to sing along again, I'm not saying you can't sing along. Go ahead, sing your heart out, but let us worship God today. So I'm going to open us up with a word of prayer and then we'll get it started. Uh, Father God, thank you for this day that you have made. Um, I'm thankful, God, just for your saints, for your children, for your people, um, that we could be here to worship you in spirit and in truth. Um, we thank you just for these opportunities and these moments we have every, not just limited to Sundays, God, but every day we can worship you, um, because you deserve it. And God, that's what we were created for. So, uh, Lord, would you bless this time, bless this worship and bless the message that will come forth, uh, later. We thank you again, father in Jesus name. Amen. Oh, 
shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. And all the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99, and I couldn't earn. And I don't deserve it And still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending Reckless love of God yeah. It's your love
Before we dive in to today, I have a question for you guys. What would you do if you knew that you could get away with it? So if there'd be no punishment, no consequence, no regret, what would you do? Answer it in the chat. something different um, and maybe there's a pretty long list of things that we would do if there was no consequence no regret um, because there's nothing worse I think than having to face the consequences of something that you've done that you know you did wrong it's pretty hard it's pretty exposing pretty embarrassing you know in third grade listen I was a kid who loved snacks let's be real I'm still a kid who loves snacks. And in third grade at my school, we had snack coupons. So if you wanted to get the snack from the cafeteria instead of, you know, having to pack your own snack, um, you would need the snack coupons. And, you know, my parents really wanted me and my sister to eat healthy. So they would pack our snacks for us, you know, which I so appreciated. But there was nothing like the smell of chocolate donuts every Wednesday morning. Guys, Wednesday morning was donut snack day. So, me, third grade, everyone puts their things in the cubbies, and Isabel, her cubby was next to mine. You know, I noticed Isabel had these glowing snack coupons. You know, they would literally glow because I wanted them so much. Um, so, you know, one day I see her put her snack coupons away in this little pouch, and I'm like, hmm, okay. So the next day, I took the pouch. I took the pouch with the snack coupons. Guys, not only did I take 30 snack coupons, that's 30 days work of snacks, worth of snacks, but it had $50 in there. $50. You know, the crazy thing is, in third grade, I didn't want the $50. I could care less about the $50. In fact, I left it in my backpack for the longest time. But every time I opened the small zipper portion of my backpack, I would feel so incredibly guilty. Especially when I took my backpack home. Well, needless to say, I carried this guilt around for a long time. 
And one day, you know, when I was upstairs playing in my room or something, my mom reaches into my backpack and was getting something, and she finds the $50. That was an incredibly exposing moment. You probably didn't have a similar situation to mine, but maybe you've had another situation where you felt that same feeling. You know, the emotion that we're going to talk about today is guilt. And guilt is one of those moods or feelings that we experience when we've done something that we know we shouldn't have done. When we've done something that we know we shouldn't have done. It's, it's shame or regret or that weight we feel, physical weight. When we know we've made a mistake or a choice that hurts us or hurts someone else. You know, that feeling can stick with us for a very long time. I kind of want to illustrate something for us here with guilt. You know, I think there's two types of guilt that we can experience. Um, and and there, the first one is false guilt. Um, so this is going to be this one, false guilt. And this is when we feel guilty about something, but we're, we're not actually guilty of anything by fact. Like, sometimes we bring this false guilt on ourselves. Um, and a lot of times, Satan makes us think that we've done something, um, or make us think things about ourselves that simply have no basis based on facts. Things like, you're not enough, or things like, you're not doing enough, or you'll never get it right, or you have to pay. You know, maybe, maybe when we get a, a lower test grade than we want it to, or when we genuinely forget to do our chores. Or, you know, maybe we accidentally make our friend feel really bad um, when that wasn't our intention at all. Like we said something mean or, or hurtful, um, not knowing that it was mean or hurtful. We carry around that guilt with us, and, and it makes us feel like we've made a huge mistake. Um, when in reality, we didn't even do those things on purpose. And, you know, maybe it's things that we've already apologized for, but for whatever reason, we're still carrying around the weight of those things. And the worst thing, guys, is that Satan wants us to hold on to that guilt for ourselves. He doesn't want us to let other people into it because we feel so um, alone, so gross, so bad, so horrible about what we've done that we want to keep it in the dark. And Satan wants nothing more than for us to do that. Because you know what happens when we when we bring things into the light? We don't have to hold on to it to ourselves anymore. And when we bring things into the light, people can speak truth into those situations. People can encourage us. People can walk with us. But But Satan wants nothing more than for us to keep those things in the dark, for us to stay in the dark. You know, the second type of guilt, I think, is called real or authentic guilt. Um, and we'll say, we'll say that these ones are real or authentic guilt. You know, we feel guilty because we are guilty. Maybe we cheated on a test or on a homework assignment, or we know that we told a lie, we know we, that we said something that wasn't true. Or maybe we, we intentionally spread a rumor about someone or um, hurt them that way by saying something that's untrue or something that's just straight up mean or wrong. And, you know, because of that, we feel guilty. But the problem is, in those cases, sometimes we're not even sure what to really do with the guilt that we feel. I think everyone responds to guilt a little bit different. You know, some of us might try to ignore it. We deny it. We act like there's nothing wrong. And we act like we've done nothing wrong. And that we don't have anything to feel guilty about. We do our best to pretend that the guilt itself isn't there. But you know, if there's one thing that I've learned myself, at least from ignoring guilt, is that it only makes the guilt more powerful. By ignoring it, by pretending it doesn't exist, it actually gives more power to the guilt. And you know, it gives it gives more time 
and space for that guilt to grow in us into something that's even bigger, something that has more power um, to motivate us to make even more bad choices um, or to tell more lies to cover up the guilt that we're trying to avoid in the first place. You know, and eventually the weight of that guilt, all of that guilt, the real guilt, the, the false guilt, all of that, the weight of that just becomes so much. I mean, just look at this backpack. Oh, guys, it is heavy. Um, There's a little glimpse into what college was like for me. But this is heavy. This is a lot to carry on. You know, right now I'm carrying it, carrying it fine, but to keep walking through the rest of my day, to keep walking through the rest of life with this, that is some heavy stuff. You know, we are carrying so much guilt that, that it weighs us down and it impacts us in some not so great ways. It affects us. It affects our relationships with other people. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's really heavy. And it affects our relationship with God. Guilt, like any other emotion, the feeling itself isn't bad. You know, when we experience guilt, it's a sign to us that something is off. It's like the gauge for fuel in a car or tire pressure. You can indicate where our fuel levels are at or where or when something is off. And that's a good thing. It's just hard, though, when we let guilt take control of us or pressure us, or boss us around, or when we let Satan convince us that we need to do things to get rid of the guilt, or that we'll never be able to get rid of the guilt. The crucial and amazing truth for us to remember this morning, with all of that said, is that Jesus actually came to save us from ever having to let guilt control or boss us around. And he came so that we wouldn't have to hide in the darkness, so we wouldn't be separated from God, and we wouldn't be separated from other people. He came so we could have freedom in him and relationship with God. We're going to look at a passage in the Bible written by a guy named Paul. We hear him spoken of as this amazing leader. And the truth is, Paul actually wasn't always an incredible leader of faith that most people remember him to be. I mean, he's done a lot of amazing things to spread the gospel and to tell people just how much Jesus loves them, the message of Jesus, and to encourage them to grow and encourage the early church to grow. But Paul had a history. He, before that, was a completely different person. And to show that he was a completely different person, I mean, he even had a different name. Saul. As Saul, he did a lot of really bad really terrible things. And, and he had plenty of reason to feel guilty about those things, things like lying and hate and, guys, even murder. But then Saul had this experience with Jesus that began to change things, and everything changed. Even his name changed. And, you know, he literally went from being called Saul to being called Paul. But what didn't change was his past. You know, the fact that, that Paul had done a lot of things that made him feel guilty, that was all still there. And a lot of things might have made him believe that he shouldn't have even shown up at church, let alone be a leader. But guys, aren't you so glad that he did? Because now we have these words in scripture that point us to who God is. And you know, that's what I think makes what he wrote in the Bible a whole lot more interesting. So let's take a look at what he wrote in the book of Romans. If you want to read along with me, it's in the New Testament. So we've got Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, and then Romans. So we're going to be in Romans chapter 8, verses 1 and 2. It says, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. So let's start with the first part of this passage. You know, the part where he's talking about condemnation. That's a big word. And it's one of the reasons 
we don't want to deal with our mistakes or our mess ups is because it leaves us feeling condemned. It's not a word that that I think we typically use in our daily language um, when talking with our friends or our family, but it's really another word for, for feeling guilty. And it's a kind of guilt that is so big, so heavy, kind of like this backpack, and so overwhelmingly like large that you just can't shake it. It's the kind of guilt that makes you feel like you'll always be defined by your mistakes or that you'll always have to be running from them. That kind of guilt weighs you down and holds you back. And, and maybe today, maybe you're carrying that kind of guilt. Maybe we don't know what for. Um, you haven't shared it with anyone. But maybe you feel condemned because of something that you've done. But immediately in this passage, in these verses that we just read, Paul says that it doesn't have to be that way. There's no guilt too heavy to weigh us down because Jesus has set us free. You know, Jesus took the weight of all our mistakes on him. He took that heavy backpack, but really the weight of the whole world's sin on him. He took the power of those mistakes, which leads to death in things like our relationships, our future, our reputation, and so much more. And instead what he did is, is he took that and he gave us the power of the Holy Spirit. And that is a power that is stronger than guilt. He took all of those things away. And you know, because of what Jesus has done for us, guilt doesn't have to be the boss of us. And Paul, what's amazing about Paul is that he experienced this firsthand because of Jesus. He was able to step out of the guilt of all of the things that he's done in the past Every lie that he told, every person that he murdered, everything that he knew was wrong. And now, of course, none of us are dealing with, with the weight of every single thing that Paul was. Our lives are very different. But we're probably all dealing with guilt in some form or another. You know, maybe it's the thing that you said to your mom that you know that you shouldn't have. Or the way that you treated your friend or your neighbor. Maybe it was the lie that you told your teacher or the way that you talked to your siblings. And maybe it's the habit that you know is wrong, but you can't seem to stop doing it. Maybe it's something you regret, something you wish you'd done differently or never done at all. Something that's left you with some guilt. And you know, if you're not careful, that guilt will tell you what to do. That full backpack, that heavy weight, it'll tell you to stay away from church. It'll tell you that you need to cool it with your relationship with God, that he can't deal with what you've done. It'll tell you that you need to hide and that you need to cover up your mistakes and that, that it's too late to ask for forgiveness and it's, it's too late and that you need to keep ignoring the guilt in hopes that it'll go away. Well, guys, these are lies. Jesus gives us a different option. He gives us the option to start over. He gives us the chance to start over and that's because of this amazing thing called grace. And it's in that that he gives us freedom. And is this a free pass to do anything that we want at all? No, it's not. But it is a new way to look at the mistakes that we've made. It's a new way to look at our past, a freedom to try again and to not be weighed down by our feelings of guilt. I lift this with one arm now. <laughs> so light. It's a chance to get rid of our guilt once and for all. You know, I love what the Bible says in 1 John 3 verse 20. It says, if our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. God knows our hearts and he wants us to be able to bring everything that we're feeling and experiencing before him. And he wants us to be able to confess our sins to him, to confess the things that we've done wrong, and to experience freedom in him, knowing that he has already paid the price for those things. You know, sometimes when our hearts condemn us, 
It might be like when Satan is trying to convince us of the things that aren't true. It's like we're not good enough or we need to pay for what we've done. And it's amazing that it says that God is greater than our hearts. You know, guilt doesn't need to be the boss of us, and it shouldn't be, because God knows our hearts, and he wants us to be able to be open before him, to surrender every single thing, the good and the hard, to him. So because we find freedom in Jesus from our guilt when we follow him, here are four things that I want us to remember this morning. The first thing is that we can stop being so hard on ourselves. You know, maybe you're someone who struggles really hard with this idea of false guilt. You know, you're someone who struggles with the weight of the guilt that others try to put on you. Or the lies that Satan tries to convince you to believe about yourself. Or maybe you're someone who's dealing with very real guilt for some very real mistakes that you've made. You know, no matter where you fall, the truth is still the same. That there is grace. And and the crazy thing is, is like the God of the universe, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, isn't hard on us. He does not hold those things against us. When we confess those things to him, he acknowledges that he has paid the price for those, the price that we couldn't have paid. So if he's not hard on us, then we don't need to be hard on ourselves. We can stop beating ourselves up for the things that we've said or done, or even the things that other people tell us that are true about us because of what we've done. And instead, we can embrace the grace that we have through Jesus. You know, the second one requires a good look at our hearts as well, and it's this. We can stop being so hard on other people. I think this is one that that we all do sometimes because it's easy to look around and think about all the reasons we know that that other people should feel guilty for the things that they've said or done. And it's easy to let that define who they are in our minds because we're passing judgment on them. We're so critical of them. But when we accept Jesus's grace for ourselves, when we let him take the weight of our of our guilt and our sin and our shame and we give those things over to him, then, then wouldn't we want other people to experience the same freedom? Because when we accept Jesus' grace for ourselves, we can and we should extend it to others, even and especially when it's hard, even and especially when they don't apologize. And it doesn't mean that what they've said or done isn't hurtful. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying it means that because of the grace of Jesus, we can offer them forgiveness and a chance to start over, just like Jesus offers us that chance. The third thing is this. We can let guilt remind us, but not define us. It's like that pressure gauge or that fuel gauge. It's an indicator. It doesn't make up who we are. Remember how we said that guilt doesn't have to be a bad thing on its own? It can be a sign that something is is not right, and it can be a sign that something needs to change. And because of Jesus, because of his power and his grace, that is where it stops. Guilt can remind us of the path that we've walked before. It can remind us of our past. It can help us not go down that road or to think twice when we make a decision the next time so we don't make those same mistakes again. But guilt doesn't get the final say. It doesn't get to be the boss of us. It doesn't get to define who we are. We are not our past mistakes. That is not our identity. And the last thing is this, you can make it right. This one's big, because sometimes we think that when we do something wrong, the most important thing for us to do is just pray and ask God for forgiveness. And that in itself is a huge step. That's an amazing step. But it's not the only step. You know, oftentimes we need to be brave to make it right with the other person. And whatever it is that you're feeling guilty about, maybe it's something you've said, maybe it's something you've done to hurt someone else. 
think it's important that we work to, to make it right. And that just means to apologize, to genuinely apologize, to ask for their forgiveness, and to try and do better the next time. You know, guys, I know this isn't easy. I know it's not always easy to keep guilt from defining who we are. Because guilt is heavy. The weight is heavy. But it's important to remember that when we listen to the truth about who God says we are, that's where our identity is. And, and that truth, that freedom, and that hope is in the gospel. It's in what Jesus has done for us on the cross. It's not about doing more or about not doing enough or being enough. You know, when we're convicted of sin, it's not so that we hide or, or hold on to that sin or those things forever and stay in the dark. That conviction is so that we can take those things to Jesus and to lay them at his feet, to confess them to him, to say we're sorry, and to acknowledge that he has already paid the price for them. You know, here's a cool picture I saw earlier this week that I think sums up just the magnitude of the price of what Jesus paid on the cross. And guys, it's for this reason that guilt does not need to be the boss of us. If you're wrestling with guilt this morning, whether that's, that's false guilt or real guilt, please don't sit in it alone. Take it to God. And, and you know that you can trust your leaders here at MSM. We hope you know that you can trust us. We can trust each other, that we are here for you. And we want you to experience the freedom that's in the grace of Christ Jesus. So let's pray. God, we thank you so much that you don't desire for us to sit in our guilt or to hide in it or to run from you, but that you want us to come to you, that you want to set us free, that you've paid the price so that you could, God, that you want us to walk in the grace and freedom and joy that's in following after you. So I pray for each student here, whether they're experiencing false guilt or real guilt or maybe a mix of both, that you would set them free to follow after you and to experience fullness of joy and freedom and peace in you and to be able to learn from their past mistakes so that they can make wise and loving decisions moving forward. It's in your name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Well, first, I just want to say thank you, Rachel, for uh, the beautiful message today and just wrapping this mood series up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was something that was very uh, beneficial to you and um, just giving you a better idea of how we deal with our emotions, because on a good day, I can feel the entire spectrum. I'm sure you guys can relate to that. Um, but there are ways that we can deal with our moods so that our moods don't have to be the boss of us. You guys are awesome. Thank you guys again just for tuning in and being so faithful coming every Sunday. And I love seeing you guys on Tuesdays. I hope you had fun last week with our riot night. Congratulations to the winners. Uh, you guys killed it. And you guys are truly Olympic champions. Really, all you guys are Olympic champions. Um, yeah, that was that was pretty cool. Pretty awesome. Uh, we're excited to see you uh, this upcoming Tuesday. We got a lot of things in store and we're excited for it. Um, and yeah, guys, have a fantastic Sunday and we will see you next time. God bless you. Take care.